Hey there, AGA members. Thanks for watching. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redmond. Today, we're going to review the 29th game in the AlphaGo self-play series. But first, we wanted to ask you to consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. It's the support of our AGA members that makes these videos possible. So before we start, a big, big thanks to all of you who have joined uh, and all of you who will join. Thank you very much. So, Michael, welcome, welcome. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I just wanted to, before we get started, uh, I just want to give a shout out to our producer extraordinaire, uh, Michael Babs Wanick. Uh, I just wanted to let all of our, our viewers out there know, uh, as you're aware, we've had some um, some technical issues, I think they're called, with the, with the sound and... Um, uh, if you're watching this video, that means that uh, that they have been solved because uh, we, we missed a week because of the sound issues. But uh, we are back and hopefully issue free. Um, if, yeah. if there's something I say or Michael says that you don't like, that's not Bab's fault. <laughs> okay. that's, that's, that's on us. All right. With that said... Um, Oh, also, I just wanted to say, um, uh, there's been a bunch of very nice, generous comments from folks who keep suggesting that we should do some crowdfunding, and I'm I'm not going to say that <clears throat> we won't do that someday. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, just go ahead and join the AGA, because you know what? You not only will be supporting these videos, but also all the wonderful stuff that the AGA does. So, that said, shall we get to the game? Sure. Well, this all time right. we're going to have... Um... AlphaGo's version of the double Kakari against the star point for just for starters. That's okay. one that I sort of like, so I've been using it in my own games. Um, so it's sort of personal for me. And then after that, we're going to have Black making this big moyo, which sort of covers about a quarter of the board. And we're going to see how AlphaGo deals with that as white. So All that's right. those are going to be the impor important parts of this game. So Black is playing uh, three four points in this game. It's actually getting a bit unusual in human professional play because the modern computers um, are mostly suggesting star points for the first four moves. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so a lot of the players are just um, doing that now. And sometimes they play like um, one, three, four point out of the four corners um, and the rest isn't, are star points. Isn't that, am I misremembering, and, and we'll do a, a quick little history thing here, wasn't, when, when the game was first invented back in China, they started with star points, is that, am I wrong there? In ancient China, and I think there was a short period in Japan also, um, it was, it lasted about in, until the time that Go came to Japan. Um, they did have um, a system where they started with a set position. Yeah, and So yeah. that was diagonal star points, though. So it's right. a bit different from what they, it's still a bit different from what they do now. Okay. It was diagonal star points. Um, and usually it was just two stones for black and two stones for white. So just the four corners taken mm -hmm. in a diagonal across um, position. Okay. Uh, in the books, you can find actually a lot more stones played also. But um, so you could have a lot more stones on the board to start with. But I don't think, right. I haven't seen many games that actually had that. So maybe it was a bit unusual. Huh. Oh, back back to the future. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So black plays the Ogema, the large knight's move, the mm -hmm. Tsumari, and white plays the Kakari. So up to this point, uh, this would have been perfectly normal. Although people used to play that uh, Tsumari as a knight's move, like here. Um, it mm -hmm. was very popular. Um, just, um, well, it's been popular for a long time. Um, and it was still popular just a decade or so ago. Um, after, and, and actually I was one of the few players who liked to play the large nice move. And there's an advantage to this in that it, it's closer to the side and it covers more area. So it puts more pressure on white towards the sides. But the disadvantage of course, is that the corner is not 100% black's territory yet. Right. So there's pros and cons to it that depend on how the play continues. Uh, but this is the way people are starting. They, they're starting to play big Sumaris now. Um, a lot of the computer programs, um, an effect of the computer programs, you might say. So this is still pretty normal. This is a point where I think usually Black would just be playing um, playing this Joseki and taking the corner territory, for instance, something like something like this. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be very normal. 
Um, but AlphaGo actually in the three times it got to this position in this set of 50 games. Um, in all three games, Black played away to the upper left corner to this play this Kakari. So um, this is a move that is a bit unusual, but it can serve as a ladder breaking move if White answers at B. So let's just uh, make a diagram to show that. For instance, um, for instance, just to do this variation, then, and obviously, uh, White has options to play this a bit. Let, let's, uh, that was a mistake. Black plays here and here, and then can play, for instance, something like this. And when White cuts here, there's a, there is a ladder here that is involved. White has to mm -hmm. be able to capture in this ladder. And with that Kakari up there, um, the ladder is going to favor Black. So Black, Black would win this game. Um, <clears throat> Another uh, uh, another possibility would be with this Joseki, and as we know with the the master against human set of games, the games that were played on the internet, um, master had a completely different way to handle this Joseki. So um, this is not really happening so much nowadays. The the variation where white plays this way and plays this way. In this case, there would be a ladder involved again. Um, so it, it sort of has to do with it, although, as I said, uh, people aren't playing this very much anymore. Uh, this variation was a, a fairly popular variation in which the latter, when black plays here, uh, has to favor white, obviously. But mm -hmm. in this case, when black has played that, let's mark the Kakari. Uh, when black has played this exchange already, it does make uh, this move a more effective ladder breaking mm -hmm. move. And white just answers on the left. Uh, sorry, uh, that was a click off. <laughs> if White just answers on the let, left, Black's going to win the ladder. The ladder's going right. to be good. And so that's a potential pro problem for White, which has sort of disappeared because of the way people have changed how they play that Joseki after the Master Series against humans. Um, but uh, you can see just from what I was, my playing around here, that even in this with this house, I mean, there are variations mm. where that stone in the upper left is going to have something to do with the ladder, and it could be troublesome for white. So AlphaGo just plays plays this way. Um, and since I mentioned ladders, it's sort of interesting that a lot of the computer programs, like Leela and I think Elf also, they, they have some issues with ladders. Like um, when I'm when I look show a game to Leela, Leela will suggest a ladder variation um, that doesn't work. <laughs> and I have to actually escape from the ladder one move. It, it tries to take in a ladder, and if, if I escape, then it realizes that the ladder is not working. So it's come to the point where it realizes after the first mistake of trying to capture in a ladder. Uh -huh. um, I think that's an improvement uh, above what it was before, but it's still, it's still making what could be a losing move in trying to capture in a ladder. Right. Um, and it's interesting that AlphaGo didn't really seem to have this issue with ladders, um, and it's probably, my guess is that it is the superior computing ability of the Google uh, hardware that they mm. were using, supercomputer. Mm -hmm. um, so white, um, white doesn't answer in the upper left and plays here. And so actually this is uh, one of the first cases where we're seeing um, AlphaGo allowing a double Kakari in the upper left corner against the mm -hmm. star point. And it's supposed to be very effective. That the um, people used to say that a double a kakari um, was quite effective, and usually a uh, human pro would tell you that white should have answered once in the upper left corner. But um, after AlphaGo, the way we uh, think about that has changed a bit. So I'll show you that in the game. Mm -hmm. um, so this is where AlphaGo extends here. Um, this is an interesting position actually because. Um, the idea was usually that if black has a pincer here um, and white plays this way, black probably wants to extend and play something like this variation. And if we have imagined that there's a black stone at the mark point, then white is a bit cramped on the right, right side. Right. So that was the idea. But then uh, people would say that when there's no, no hasami, when there's no pincer stone, it's okay for black to play the hane instead. And so in that case, white would be taking the corner like this. But AlphaGo doesn't do that. Um, I think the idea is that this corner territory is too big. Um, it doesn't seem to like this for black. Oh, too much cash, so, maybe. Too much cash. Um, 
And uh, maybe because of that, I don't see human players playing that very much anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's an interesting change. I'm, I'm not really sure. Um, I did ask Leela, and Leela did give a good score to White. So I, that, that's how I'm, I'm looking at it here. Okay. So black extends, and we get this. This is a Joseki sequence, but mm -hmm. um, it's supposed to be okay for White getting that nice extension on the right side. White has used an extra stone there. Um, to get to this position, like White played two moves in a in a row on the in the upper in the lower right area, that is. Mm -hmm. um, but White does have an ideal position with this. Uh, the corner position is also surrounding territory on the large largest possible way, with that Sagari being the ideal move there. Can you? And Blacks, yes. No, I just want to see if you could talk about. Um, I've sometimes seen, uh, and I don't think it's Joseki, but I've sometimes seen in amateur players that Black will play. Uh, the knights move uh, one diagonal to the right to finish that. This one, right? Yeah, it, it, it looks um, like it's the I, same it looks thing. Like... That's also a Joseki variation. Is it? Okay. It's okay. not necessarily a weak move, but um, just to give a random black move there. There's a weakness here at the second line. Right. Right. And like, if black is playing on the outside like that, black has about five. Oh, sorry, that's bad. Uh, about five liberties in the corner. So if we have white crawling this far, um, and then this, um, and if we have black play this way, then white's already winning the semi. Black has five liberties and white has six. Right. So there's some danger there. Um, and if black is just um, pulling back with something like this, then obviously the whole group is going to be under, under fire. So this yeah. is this works well if black, for instance, is um, has a position in the lower left corner and has a relatively strong position there. Or if Black is going to immediately um, play something like this, then if Black gets to that point, then mm. this would be working. Okay. So there's conditions that are usually it's a bit dangerous. And this is even this group is not 100 percent alive. Mm -hmm. Like if we if we assume that there are some white stones in the area and white is sort of able to do whatever he wants and not worry about connections, then we could uh, build uh, build this position. And we can see that black has only six stones on the second line. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, white would be able to kill it with this position. Um, right. Lo and just locally. White needs one or two, three more moves on the outside, maybe. But um, it's a it's a kind of a threat there. This, that's another um, factor, actually, in the reason why this is locally a good shape for white, even though white has played an extra move in the lower right area. That uh, The fact that white does have this eventually will have this threat to attack black um, is one of the factors that makes this playable for white, makes it good for white. Okay. So black plays the double Kakari. Yes, double um, Kakari. So again, for instance, I was talking about Leela and its mistakes with ladders. This is a point where it would want to cut it A. Let's see. I've, I've actually made a variation for it. Okay. And so I, I let Leela play this, um, and it got this far. <laughs> so this is where white's winning percentage would go from something like 70% to something like 30%. Just just the moment I put this stone on the board. It would immediately see it. Oopsie. Yeah. Um, and it might depend on the hardware, but I um, I, I honestly think with a desk, desktop or, or you, you, even if it's pretty good, it probably still makes that mistake. Because um, I'm using fairly good hardware, I think. Mm. So white um, white doesn't do that, um, and plays this way. So this is just a normal joseki. Um, this is the one that is mostly often chosen here. Um, this is a position where people were sometimes playing this, um, which has more eye shape for white. And if black mm. pushes through, white can just extend here. So mm. it's a much more flexible move. This is a move that is is still feasible for white, but it's not quite as popular as before, basically because AlphaGo was just about playing here every time, unless it was playing here. This is also a variation that has become very popular. So it's mm. these two popular variations are sort of uh, making this one scarce. Um, but in my opinion, it's not completely ruled out. It's a feasible pl play also. So just to get into this one, if white plays this way, um, the most common continuation is for black to push through once and then play the honey in the corner. And they get this far. At which point, um, black can actually play on the upper side or play in the corner. But it's more usual to play in the corner and have white play an extension here on the mm. side. So this would be even, it would be actually 
it seems to be a reasonable way for White to play in this opening because Black did have a position in the upper right corner, which means that Black had um, Black had the option of fighting strongly here. So it sort of makes sense for White to be playing this relatively peaceful uh, mm. variation. So this would be some, and actually I've seen White play that move. Um, I mean, I've seen Alpha Go play that move. I think the master version played that move um, against one of the human pros. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but that was, um, that was pretty late in the middle game, if I recall correctly. So mm -hmm. maybe it was considering it a, a special position. Um, I don't know. But uh, this is a move that has become, the, the whole variation here has become very popular now. Mm. So to get back to the game, white connected. And here is the position where um, AlphaGo likes to play this move. Mm. And I like to play that move usually, but um, not. It's it's pretty unusual to get into this board position already because of the the black in, corner enclosure in the upper right corner. Um, so usually this double Kahari variation in modern Go, it's quite often played in a miniature Chinese opening style where black has played a Kahari against white's corner and white's played away. So. Usually, there's, um, you have a star point or, or maybe just a, a three, four point here. Um, maybe just this black, maybe just this black stone. And white has ignored the Kakari to play a Kakari of his own at, at this point, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. I hope I am being clear. I'm a bit too far into the game to be making a variation for that, I think. Um, but usually, it's a position where white has more strength in the general area. Right. Whereas right. in this case, black has this Shimari. At B, the corner enclosure at B, mm -hmm. makes it possible for Black to play more strongly, I feel. So actually, in this position, I would be okay with playing here. So for instance, what? if White does something like this and does something like this, this would be the problem that Black could have with this. Um, some kind of pincer like this could be the problem that Black has um, when White actually has a stone in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. But of course, in this position, Black would have more option to attack White on both sides, actually. So this would be perfectly playable for Black. Right, but I, I think this is, uh, and, and I, I've played the, 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 the large knights move for years. I mean, not just because I liked it. I mean, it's a little mm -hmm. faster and uh, it's a little uncomfortable because it's not the territory, but, um, but isn't part of it means you can do the kind of things that you're talking about, right? Uh, I think right. that's part of a part of your implication of what you're saying. Well, yeah, it? just the fact that it's closer to the side, one yeah. one line closer to the side makes it that much more effective when something happens on the side. Right. Um, in this position, in this board position, I would be uh, happy to play here, even if it was a small knight's enclosure. Mm. Um, just having that extra stone in the upper mm -hmm, right corner, mm -hmm, it doesn't mm -hmm. make enough difference. But okay. of course, when a fight does erupt, that it's going to be better to have it on the at the large knight's point. Right. Uh, better even compared to the small knights getting closer. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't see any problem with playing this move. But at the same time, in my own games, I've had a lot of fun playing this move too. I've played it several times in my own game, tournament mm -hmm. games. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like this move only in this board position. I don't really see that it's necessary for black to, uh, because it's a, it's relatively, it's a defensive move. It's a move where black it, is taking a, a bit of a base there. It, it um, feels a little slow, right? Not quite as aggressive as the other one. Yeah. Of course, if White plays something like this, it's, it's still the same idea as the other move. It's very similar in the fact that Black is going to get great shape when White yeah. uh, covers the cut in this way. Yeah. Uh, so if White pincers here, let's see what variation I made for that. Um, it gets a bit busy for White because White has to deal with the cutting point here. Um, let's see, this, this cutting point. Uh, so that's a problem for white. So I have white continuing uh, like this. And you can see white's getting a bit cramped in shape and black has um, potential to attack here. So this would actually be a good variation for black. Mm. So it's a bit early for white to be attacking black on the left side. And this is kind of a key issue here because white does want at some point to be able to attack black on the left side. It's very interesting the way White um, set that up because White, basically White um, threw, a threw a few stones on, on the upper side and then just made a life in the corner so as to have a strong base 
and then White could pinch her um, later on the left side. So I'll show mm. you how that happens. White starts with this move. Mm. Now, this is a shoulder hit. Um, I said before that this position, let's just go back to that position where I was talking about how uh, Black playing away uh, when White played that Kakari in the lower right. Mm -hmm. This happened three times in this set of 50 games. Um, and every time they got into a, something a bit similar in this variation in the upper left corner, although the lower right corner was slightly different. In the lower right corner, White was playing, um, White was playing uh, the, directly, White was just playing the uh, attachment at the three three point. So it was just these two white stones and this one black stones, just these three stones that we had in the lower right corner when this kind of thing was happening in the upper left corner. Okay. So it was um, it was a similar position, although the lower right corner was less stones. Um, so every time White played this uh, shoulder hit, and I really like this move. It's a funny move. Um, and the idea is basically that this point, I'll, I'll mark this point, which is a key point. When white plays this point and black answers it, let's have black answer with a square. Um, when this exchange is played, this is going to be a kind of a key, uh, vital point in black's shape. So when black, um, when black pushes here and white ex extends for the time being. But if at some point white plays here to um, make the connection, black will probably not play this. But we're going to see a position where black has to do something. But when this happens, um, this exchange obviously is good for white. It's a good exchange for white. So mm. that's that's part of the idea but behind this shoulder hit uh, that white plays here. And I have white, black, this looks really sort of loose and weird because there, it's sort of weak when white covers on the third line. But actually, there was one of the games uh, that I was talking, one of the three games that I was talking about in which uh, black played this move. And they got into something like this. You can see it's going to be exciting. Uh, but that was wow. one of the wow, wow, that wow. was one of the last games in the in the numbered order that they gave these games. I think it was forty seven or something like that. Mm. So we'll be getting to this game later. But it, it's a big fight that erupts on the upper side. It's really exciting. Okay. They sort of fill fill up the upper half of the board in that game. Um, so white plays the shoulder hit. Black pushes. Um, so two of the three games. Um, it was like this. And then black plays the knight's move. And in this game, white played the attachment. So the idea here is that, again, white, if white can exchange this with a black stone at A, then uh, that marked black stone is going to be bad. It's going to be bad shape. Right. So instead, black pushes here. And when black pushes here, obviously, white wants to do something with the two stones, only alpha go doesn't. So, like, um, it would be natural sort of shape to be playing here. Yeah. And I'm going to have Black try to connect up here. So either Black's going to connect up these two groups and have a thick shape. Or if White uh, plays the honey. Oh, I didn't play the honey. Okay, let's have White play the honey here. And Black cuts. Uh, white can do this. But eventually, White's going to have to do something about the corner. So White does that. White's alive. Uh, but black can just uh, push through here and something like this. You can see white's not really getting any aggressive possibilities on the left side. Mm. And black is spreading out to the left side. So white's lost the opportunity to play a pincer move on the left side. So this fight is not really a fight that white white's going to be able to win, you might mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. So otherwise, if white just lives in the corner. Oh, OK. So I did it this way. It's the same variation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In any case, um, black is going to be on the offensive here. Yeah, white looks uh, white looks very busy. Mm -hmm. So instead of starting that, white, black, white's just going to sort of play dead with these two stones. Um, and it doesn't cure, you might say. It, we're going to see how these stones sort of come back to life later in the game. But okay. for the time being, it's just going to forget them, you might say. Right? Sort of interesting if the computer forgets something. I was going to say, yeah, I don't think that's the right word. <laughs> and allow Black to play what is a key point. Yeah. Uh, Ow. The, Ow. The advantage for White is now that White is completely alive in the corner, uh, White is free to play this pincer. Uh -huh. And it doesn't really have to continue. So that's the, the positive uh, thing about this for White. And White jumps here. White's putting a bit of pressure on Black on the left side. Uh, but typically, if uh, AlphaGo, it's not going to answer directly. 
and why it plays here. So at some point, I'm going to show you a variation uh, that shows what might be happening to that flat group. Um, actually, this move is it's almost a direct threat. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sort of ambiguous whether black is really in trouble if black plays away, but it's, it's troublesome. So I'm going to show you what happens, for instance, if black plays. This looks like a nice move. Let's go back to black 45, though, first, because this move uh, was a bit puzzling. Like, I didn't really see the necessity of playing here at this point. And I saw two big points on the board, and um, and those were A and B. And um, I asked Leela, actually. I, I uh, Quite recently, I got Leela on my PC. Yay. And um, I asked Leela. Leela gave pretty close um, values to A and B. And so I've come up with the idea that maybe AlphaGo was having trouble choosing between them and that they were just about the same value. Okay. And I think maybe it's playing this shoulder hit to see how white answers. Um, for instance, if white answered underneath, uh, that would probably cool down the left side to mm. a certain degree. Mm -hmm. And so that would probably make this, this move bigger relatively, although I didn't check that far. Okay. Um, I, I, that's my, my feeling. It would um, be a, a slight kikasi when white starts playing moves like this or or like um, or like this on the lower side, um, it's probably going to be a slight gain for black. So that's that's what I thought. But actually, this move is a direct threat against black. So if black plays on the outside like this, white's going to uh, white has the option. Of yeah, like this. and eyeing that Hane. Mm -hmm. And yeah. white will cut here. Yeah. So we get into a actually. There's no way for black to live except for this co in the corner. So black has uh, to play this okay. co. Okay. Um, and black does have some co threats. And so, you know, it's it's actually not going to be a decisive win for white, but it is sort of worrying. Um, in this variation, I'm, it's going to be a trade uh, because white runs out of co threats. So hmm. this would actually be pretty even with white getting some extra thickness on the outside. Um, by getting a very strong position here on the outside. Um, I'll just mark white's wall here. Now this is this group is pretty much alive with that eye there. Um, so it's a fairly strong group. So white's got some extra position, positional strength on the outside and a nice territory in the corner while black got the two cutting stones. And so black got some territory there too. So this might not actually be happening immediately, but it is a kind of a threat that white has once white has played, once white has played this move, mm. so it's sort of worrisome, and it, it could uh, sort of link up with, for instance, it could link up with moves like this, which would make it more effective if black extends, and stuff like that. So it is troublesome for black. So black just plays here, and now if white plays here, uh, black can play here, and then here, and like connecting here. Um, for the time being, white's position on the left is going to fall apart if white tries too hard. So um, I have white cutting here, but then, of course, black can just capture the cutting stone. So that's what nice. black stone at B is doing. Um, and so white uh, plays the cap. The left side, uh, for the time being, it looks like it's in trouble. Um, but, of course, AlphaGo just plays away. Of course. And... And the overall position, the, the upper right area is getting pretty serious now. Uh, white curls around once. This is a fairly important point. Like black would be pushing on the same point uh, if white had played elsewhere. And black plays here. This is also a very uh, good looking move. It's, it's a move that people would um, say good things about, probably, even if a human player played it. It would be the intuitive move. Interesting because I mean it sort of looked like it's sort of uh, finishing up the moyo, but of course the corner is is still open, right? It's sort of open. Uh, like sometimes it's it's pretty tough for white to find the correct sequence in this position. I, I was going to ask. Uh, it would be very. It's a very complicated um, thing for white to successfully invade this um, lot, moyo. Lot. Right? Like there are some weak points. One of the weak points is here, of course. Um, but uh, depending on how white goes about it, um, this can either, like if white plays there um, immediately, 
than black would usually answer here. Um, white's losing points on the side. So usually white would want to be playing this move at a good time. But then sometimes if white has played other moves inside the moyo, then sometimes black's going to play from this side and just let white take some territory on the right side. Right. So it, it depends on how much uh, lost white is taking in the process. Like at this point, if white plays this immediately, black's, it's, I'm pretty sure black's going to answer aggressively. But if white does something like, for instance, something um, inside first, um, and then eventually uh, is trying to link it up with something like that, then sometimes it's um, it's not good enough. Um, I hope that's a good enough example. It was pretty yeah, yeah, random. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but no. that, that's the idea I have here. So the yeah. order of moves when white invades this moyo is very complicated. White has a semi-forcing move there. And that is actually, um, the reason I showed that move was because it was the one that white didn't use. So um, <laughs> we're going to see the other moves in actual play. So this was a, a, a strangely effective move. It sort of yeah. links up with the forcing move at A. White has this forcing move yep. at A, yep. which immediately it would just give black great shape here. So it's not really good for white to be doing it immediately. But white is sort of setting it up with this move, setting it up um, to play next. And mm -hmm. it will be a semi-forcing move that will help white make eyes on the upper side. A and semi, so this is move, semi, semi move. Well, usually it's forcing, not always. I, that's <laughs> that's the word I use sometimes. Um, it's a forcing move that's not necessarily a more forcing move. And this is played like a couple or three dozen moves before uh, the need arises. And so I think that it's showing very deep calculation on the part yeah, of Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Black, naturally, this is again a position where if, it had, if white had been playing in the upper right corner first, um, then black would have different options of, for instance, playing from, from inside in some cases. But right. since white plays it at this point, uh, it's pretty obvious that black wants to play on the outside. Uh, just a quick question. So, yeah, I, I, well, okay, then the timing comes. You, you'll probably talk about it. I mean, I think a lot of us, uh, my, me and other amateurs out there, it would be hard for us to find uh, much on that seam to play, and we would probably just go right for the corner. But I think mm -hmm. what you were saying earlier, there's a lot of ways to die in there, right? Yeah, it would be very easy to die. Um, and, like, if White is playing something like this, um, my feeling, right. at least, is that it's probably even if White lives in the corner, it's going to be a, a two-point life or something like that. Right. right. Um, it's going to be worth something close to twenty points, but probably not good enough. And probably Gote, I, I imagine. Uh, definitely Gote. Yes. Yeah. Um, so a small life is sometimes not going to be good enough. Okay. Um, and um, it's really difficult to. It would be if I had this position in the game. Um, I would not be able to read it out um, in the mm. well. It would. Uh, I would probably run out of um, energy, <laughs> <laughs> and and but I, I'd also and run time. out of time. Yes. Um, so white. There's a number of weak points in this shimari, and one of them was that move I was showing you. So there's a, a weak point here, which is quite often used against the large nice move, but also the game move. Um, also, when white, um, sometimes this is used. But since this is not an attaching move, it doesn't really have the same force as an attaching move would have. So when white is in a very tight position like this, it's probably better to be choosing an attaching attachment. So that's I, I agree with the idea behind this move. And again, like if black plays on the top here, uh, it would be relatively easy for white to start making eye spacer. Mm. Um, this is something that can actually happen in uh, in a board position that favors white more. And like if white has some local stones and it's not this big moyo that black has, then sometimes black will just play this way and let white take the corner territory. Mm -hmm. But that would be just too easy for white in this position. So black plays uh, Hane underneath. And so um, just because black has so many stones in the area, this is possible. Like otherwise, if it was less black stones on the outside, white would be able to live relatively easy with something like this, and for instance, jumping out. But mm. in this case, white doesn't really have anything to connect to. So uh, although I said jumping out, white's not really out in this position. Mm -mm. And so it's probably just going to die. Yeah, uh, that, 
if it was me, it would definitely die. It looks dead already. Yeah. And that's no. just because it's an example of how all of those stones that black has on the outside are changing mm -hmm. um, how white can deal with this. Because otherwise, right. um, if those stones weren't there in that variation I was showing you, um, then this honey that black has played underneath would uh, probably be an overplay. Um, but just because black has so many stones in there, yeah. So white cuts here. Now cutting here is the is something you do when you're um, trying to make a life inside your opponent's strength area. Cut, 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 cut. Um, pulling back, back like uh, sorry, pulling back like this is a bit heavy in such yeah. a case. Yeah. Um, the honey here on top is more like it, but again, uh, in this case, black would just play here and connect, mm -hmm. and that solid connection is just taking a lot of. Um, it doesn't white doesn't have very much potential to be forcing, playing forcing moves. So that's um, the fact that black has this solid connection on the second line, mm -hmm. instead of white being able to, um, well, I'll get to that variation next. So um, I added a few moves to this um, to show what I thought might happen. I can't really, although white has nice shape, I can't really see how white can uh, make a light. Actually, this is a, a, an example of a variation where this would not be forcing anymore, and black would just allow white to take some of the side away. Right. Um, right. So that was what I was talking about before when I, I said that. Was yeah, that makes sense. Because that's, that's just not that big. It's, well, yeah, after all these stones White's played from inside, it's not big enough. Um, so White cuts. And so the idea here is to get more forcing moves. So like if Black captures the cutting stone, uh, White can play this. And then if Black takes, of course, then White's going to get another Atari from above. So just in that, even if White does something like this, it's already better for White than the other moves were white, white's playing mm. from above, putting some pressure on that black group on the other side. And if black connects again, white black gets to play this one. Now there's more potential for white. Like there's um, now white would play here, and it would be more wide open, more difficult for black to be capturing the corner with. There's still whatever black does. There's still still going to be some maji with a white move here in the corner. Mm. So if black continues strongly. Um, then those marked groups, the two marked groups um, for black are also not completely alive. Um, and this will give white some leverage, you might say, to, to make a living shape. And still it's a position where uh, white would probably still have plenty of opportunities to die. But my feeling is that white should be able to live here mm. if white plays correctly. So I left it there. I didn't want to get into a big variation when I wasn't sure what was happening. That's good enough. <laughs> the so the black pull. pulls back. This yeah. seems to be a very reasonable move. Absolutely. Um, it's Once black is pulled back here, uh, white's potential on the right side of black's moyo there is more or less gone. It's, black has a very stable position in the corner, which is going to make it very difficult for white to make use of this forcing move here. So the ideas of white invading on the right side of this is that idea is pretty much gone. Mm. So white just, this is actually sort of vulgar, but it's a very effective move in this case, just plays this extra push and jumps to the side. And suddenly I can't find a way to kill it. So- um, Wow, wow. Let's see, I, I had black try playing, curling around seems to be the most natural move. Sure, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and white's going to play this move. So this is where finally, uh, finally, this zone is coming into play, and it's making this Hane a, a good forcing move. What's more, uh, it gives White the the hanging connection here, which is really good eye space. And you can see it's... that White really need to have White needed to have this stone in first to have that happen. This this feels to me like uh, a magic trick. Yeah, yeah. I was I was right? about to say magic. Right? It's, it's it's sort of like magic. Like it's... this move was there. Um, it was about 20 moves ago, almost 20 yeah, moves ago. Yeah, yeah. And then he left it. was it. all waiting left just it. to happen. Uh, so, yeah, sort of like black magic. <laughs> um, I, didn't, I didn't say black magic. I just said regular yeah. magic. <laughs> That's pretty evil, I think. Um, and here we have white living oh in it. Oh, my gosh. Thing. And so I, white needed that stone at A to make B forcing. And it wasn't just forcing. It was that hanging, uh, hanging connection there. Um, white needed to have that shape. I did not see that coming. Well, I think it just took the Google supercomputer to, to make it possible even for AlphaGo. 
Wow. Um, so instead, instead of doing this one, uh, Black peeps once and plays here. So again, this is um, this is a, a vital point, mm. and also Black is starting to put some pressure on the corner. So this hanging connection is going to combine with an Atari underneath here, mm -hmm. which we're going to see later in the game. It's it's an added connection, added security, let's say, for, for this black stone, having that hanging connection there. So white plays here. So now this is really a wowing move. Um, it looks sort of s stupid, you might say. <laughs> but actually, it's a very effective way for my white to make eyes. So I made a variation. Um, this move, obviously, is it's locally going to lose a lot. So yeah. it's a kind of a gambit or a sacrifice, you might say. Um, it would be much more natural for white to push here. Um, black will extend. And white can make a, a life. But the problem is that when white does that, uh, this stone here, this stone that white has here, it's not really getting rid of the, the peep here. Mm -hmm. So that's why the natural pushing move, I'll mark it again, the natural pushing move here, which seemed to be the right shape, um, it's not quite as efficient as I thought because it's not getting rid of this peep here. And the peep is actually fairly um, effective because if white pulls back, if white answers it normally, then white doesn't have room for two eyes. Mm. And so white's going to play here and black can uh, push through here and then cut. And white will be able to live, but white's gonna be sacrificing something. For instance, if white connects here, uh, we get this sequence where, where black does has the option uh, to capture, black's not gonna do it yet, but black has the option to play at B and capture uh, that five stones. So that's big. Um, so there's a sacrifice involved there. And it turns out that this move in the end doesn't lose as much. Um, because uh, as I was pointing out, it's, it's this peep. Uh, oh no, that's a different variation. And this one is the peep here that is causing all, all the trouble for white. So let's see how that happened in the game. White's going to get rid of that peep. It's not going to be a double peep anymore. And so we get to this point. This is the game variation. Uh, where this stone is giving white just the added necessary um, eye space. So when black plays, if, if black plays here, we can see it's it's not a double peep anymore. It's just a single right. peep. And it's a, so double, white it's has, a double magic trick. Yeah, so white has this, this place. It's um, closed off. It means that if black continues with something like this, white's going to have no trouble making a life. Right, right. That's very clever. Yeah. And so there's act, um, I found this move really strange where white played played an attachment, and this stone is going to be taken away. But it worked very well at this point. Yeah, white's already alive. very clever. And black plays away. Um, at some point, I think it was um, a good idea for black to be playing. This would have been a forcing move. Mm. And... There are reasons for, like, th when black plays there, white's going to be able to play a big move here. So there's there's some reasons that black would be able would not want to play it immediately. Um, but I think black had to play this move at some point. I don't, I don't well, really understand why it didn't play that move. Well, just talk a little bit about what are the reasons why you wouldn't well, play Well, there's a territorial way. loss. Like, ideally, black would want to play from this side and have white play here. And white's alive because if black tries to take the eye away, the eyes away, then white can push through here. So it's a ah, lie. Right, right, right. Um, but ideally, black would want to be playing this kind of a sequence, taking the upper side territory, and then forcing from the center. But okay. in actual practice, if, if black does that, that would be an opportunity for white to push out here. And for the time being, um, it doesn't look like black can actually kill this white group because the outside is just completely falling apart. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's, and that's so not... it means that white's going to get that stone in. And so if Black really wants to play that Atari, Black has to just do it and take a loss of territory and potentially um, that Black group on the upper side, if it gets cut, cut off somehow, it would be eyes that Black is losing also. Mm. So there's a, a very uh, realistic loss that Black has to take in order to get this Atari, but it's a very thick move in the center. And I think Black should have played it. 
you like but you things. can see that it's a, a difficult choice to make. Mm. Um, and I would assume that since AlphaGo didn't play it as black, then it's a um, that the it, it probably felt that the loss that it incurs is too big, and it's it's a it's a very devil it's a, it would be a matter of taste or um, a, a difficult choice for a human player too. I'm with you. I like I like the thick moves like that. That's well, as far as Alpha goes concerned, the, you know the the score that it gives would probably be very very similar, whether mm. Black plays that move or not. It's probably a mm. very uh, subtle difference. So what's mm. happening here is um, we have to remember that Black already uh, always had the issue of this this move that White could play at some point to cut Black off. So there's still a bit of Aji there, but also. Um, because Black has, okay, I'll, I'll mark this stone this time. Because Black has this stone here, Black has some opportunities to attack White in the corner. So mm. Black is uh, trying to attack the White group, um, but at the same time, Black has to be careful about Black's group on the outside. So Black plays once here. You know, it's really annoying when White plays this move, and Black cannot kill the corner. <laughs> so I made a variation. Uh, for Black trying to kill the corner. Um, first of all, Black once White has played uh, this stone in the center, uh, Black has very few effective co-threats, uh, just because uh, this White group has suddenly become fairly strong now. Mm. So Black doesn't have very many co-threats. And I say that because there's a co that could happen in the upper left corner. So like, for instance, if Black plays here, it would be very easy for white to make a call with something like this. And there's no way black can uh, connect there. So black would have to take this stone, and it would be a call on the, on the first line. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, so that would be a very dangerous call for black, where black would be mm -hmm. losing a lot. Uh, so that's one of the things. So in the main variation, I'm going to have black uh, play this way to get rid of the call, and also erase white's eyes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the other problem is that uh, White has this connection on the first line. So oh, that, that's sweet. One, of the, yeah, one of the things that Black has to worry about. Um, actually, there's also the fact that White has that threat of uh, playing at A at some point. Yeah, I've been wondering about that. So if White somehow gets stones at the three mark points, then White's going to be alive. So there's a lot of uh, issues that Black has to deal with here. Right. So black just covers here. That that settles most of the problems. This is reinforcing black's group on the side and getting rid of the threatened attack here by mm. making some ice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, uh, closing off the side. So white doesn't have that connection underneath either. So white now protects the corner. And uh, so the status of this corner is that if black plays here, white can play here, threatening to make eyes in the corner. Um, and then white can play here. Now, this is usually a forcing move. Sometimes it isn't. So it depends on what happens on the left side. Uh, but if we assume that it's a forcing move, then white has no trouble making two eyes. So uh, I'll add that white needed that stone at A to stop black from playing at B. Mm. So there's still a bit of bad oddsy there for white, but um, for the time being, there's no way for black to attack it. So we can see that with this move on the left side, uh, there is that hidden threat. Um, if that mark point, that point that I've marked there, if it fails to be, uh, ceases to be forcing, then the corner will not be completely alive. It will turn into something like a co, actually. Mm. So there's a, a, a bit of bad odds there. And the way AlphaGo uh, handles it is characteristic. Uh, because AlphaGo plays away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, I was like, yeah, all right, take a dead stone, add another dead stone, and then play yeah. away. Sure, why not? So uh, the impulse would be to try to find a way to settle this position locally right. without doing something bad to the corner. So for instance, like this, if white plays this way, this is actually going to be an example of how it does affect the corner. Because black can play this way, and um, and capture those white stones on the side. And if it wasn't a problem in the corner for white, uh, it would be just fine. Like white would play at B, and white would have this huge moyo on the lower side. But the problem is that black has this attack at A, and it's going to be a call with white throwing in at the mark points. 
But um, so that's an issue that White has after this fight on the left side. Wow. And that the the fact that Black has that attack in the corner uh, changes this from what would be a position that's good for White into a position that's a bit troublesome for White. Mm -hmm. It makes all the difference. Without that, uh, the 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 play at B would be so big that White could afford to sacrifice the left side. Mm -hmm. But I would, the impulse would still be to try to find a way to deal with it locally. Like I mean, maybe I would try doing something like this. Um, but again, Black would have no trouble making a life. Like even something like this would, uh, with the peep there, uh, the peep here, mm -hmm. and the, the cut here. Right, uh, Black has right. all sorts of uh, ways to to make a life here. So White just plays away. And of course, of course, this is a huge move. It it, it makes a big huge. difference. Central on the right side. What's what's the point count on that move? I've been trying. I can't calculate it. It's probably about thirty points. I. It's, wow. it's not really the kind of move that you can calculate. Um, just yeah, simply. just a feeling. It's, I mean, I, I, you can feel it's big. At this, when White plays here, the whole right side is not really. It doesn't belong to Black anymore. Right. And right. so there's some there's some Im implied attacking potential also for white in the center of the board. And that's the part that doesn't really uh, translate to numbers very easily. But that's that's why, you know, your idea about doing it was you know, making that Atari is, it just solves everything, you know? It's territory, there's no attack. I mean, I, I just based on those things, I would do it. AlphaGo doesn't like to keep things simple. <laughs> um, and yes, honestly, it, it would, I think the score that the computer would give it would be probably just about the same anyway. I know, uh, I know. Just getting that right territory is not going to be enough to win the game, no, not necessarily. I, I think uh, that should be. We just we 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 uh, we should make that the title of the AlphaGo book. You know, AlphaGo book. AlphaGo doesn't like to do things simply. It doesn't like to do things simple. Um, I'm writing well, it probably down. Probably because sometimes it's um, it's a bad idea to play simple and then lose. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, so, okay. Fair enough. Uh, maybe it had a bad score. In fact, actually, um, AlphaGo. I think AlphaGo and all of the computer programs start by giving White a good score. Mm. So in these games, where um, actually I'm, I'm going to tell you in, in advance, White's going to win this game. Um, okay. Just just to to let me make my point. When in these games that White wins, uh, I think that White is having an advantage throughout the game. As far as the the score the score mm -hmm. um, is is going, mm -hmm. so as far as the computers are concerned, Black is the one that was in trouble. Okay. But of course, in some of these games, we have Black winning, so it's it's not a a, a, a rule there. But um, I think in the games that White wins, there's a tendency for White to be probably um, having a good score throughout the game. So black added a stone to the left side, um, and once black has played here, all of white's stones on the left are, are very thin. They're they're weak, um, but white doesn't bother with that. Of course not. So this is a, peer, a position where you know you would usually think of playing a, some kind of a connection, for instance a, uh, but white plays this knight's move, which is interesting. Um, and if black cuts here, white extends. And so in this variation, um, just to uh, make sure you're following, if black cuts here, white's going to, um, well, it's going to have a way to live in the, in the side, you might say. Actually, this is the Tesuji here, and white gets some forcing moves on the side. And in this case, white would just uh, sacrifice the whole, whole thing. Jesus. <laughs> um, and this would actually be very good for white, because the whole right side is turning into a white moyo. And so Black doesn't really have any way to punish this move. In the game, Black uh, played here. And the problem is that uh, what White has done here is White is connected at A with Sente and mm. still has a move at B, which we're going to see later in the game. Wow. And this is the big point that White wanted to play, of course. So yeah. White got to this yeah. point in Sente. And Black plays here. Now, the whole left side is sort of falling apart for White, but uh, that's okay because... It was sort of a trade of the left side for uh, what's happening on the right side of the board. So white just sacrifices that. And we have to remember that uh, the corner sort of depends on having this forcing move. So the status of white's corner is changing a little bit as this stuff is happening on the left side. 
So white uh, starts with the attachment here. This is a nice tesuji. And then gets to a stone at the peak, which again, um, let's see. Um, it has to do with this, this um, potentially forcing move here. If white can get this move in, then the corner is going to be okay. So white peeps here to make that uh, that bumping move forcing. Mm -hmm. So black answers um, this way. And now white's really in trouble in the corner. So white needs an extra move. But white stones on the outside. Um, it's a bit awkward for black to be saving this stone here. So um, the white stones on the outside are pretty much okay. Hmm. Um, actually, the, the local move would be to play here. And I wondered why black didn't do that. Hmm. Um, so white's probably going to take away black's eye space here and this, then just jump. And as I was saying before, this does put a bit of pressure on black's group on the lower side. It's not 100% alive. Wow. So if we have black playing here, that, that will be alive. Uh, hmm. But then white would be able play this move on the right side. And there's actually no way for black to, uh, to, to save the right side. Like if black plays, um, let's have black trying to play here. Uh, we can see that this is leading to disaster. Oh black my God. Stones nice five stones. Suji. Wow. Uh, very simple, isn't it? Yeah. Um, otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's still the same thing. It's still the same thing even if black plays here. White still has this forcing move, uh, which makes this very, very effective. Um, white has the connection on the right um, or could push through here first. So this is just not working for black. Well, and all those black stones in the middle are are just a target They're getting now. weaker and weaker, yeah. Yeah. So this this move here is a very effective move that white has. Mm. And it's, it's sort of the, the move that white is aiming to play at some time. Um, and also the fact that in this variation, when white plays A and B, to attack black in the lower right, um, it allows white to surround the lower side in a very efficient way. Mm. So um, considering that, it makes sense that black played here. So this mm. makes a complete life for the black group. And um, it's it's going to allow black to jump into the lower side next. Mm -hmm. So it's reducing the lower side. And if white is um, going to follow black, black around, then eventually black's going to be able to play uh, something like this to make the right side territory too. Mm. So um, white can't really afford to be answering black's move. So white plays this right now. And I guess I made the same variation, yeah. So black yeah. plays here, um, an example of how this works for white. So black just uh, played down and white played down. And suddenly we have another weak black group. So black jumps out and white connects underneath. So, so um, nice, so nice. So now what we're looking at, white has gained a lot of territory. Um, the left side is black's territory. The right side is white's territory. Um, the corner, upper right corner is black's territory. Um, everything is settled except for the center of the board and the lower side. So um, those are the two things that the players have to deal with at this point, the lower side and black's weakness in the center. <coughs> I, 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 I do know, yeah. That, that, those so, stones in the, in the middle just look like... Uh... Yeah, they're all floating around. Actually, um, with the threatened connection here, which doesn't work quite yet, Black does have a, a forcing move in the vicinity of this this point. Sure. So there's, um, they're going to be okay now that Black has added a stone to them. So White escapes. Now mm. again, Black has to worry about the center, but um, can't afford to let White take the lower side either. So Black plays here. Um, and white just plays away. Like if white had answered underneath, um, we could see that uh, white would be starting to have some trouble with white stones in the center too. Mm -hmm. That would be a bad connection. Mm -hmm. So white starts with the connection. Um, and if black answers it, like um, white would probably not actually try to save that one stone. White could do stuff like this just to sacrifice it on a small scale, uh, which would be more reasonable in this board position. So black, peeps once, and here. And yes, actually, I did make a variation where uh, black adds one more stone to the center. Oh, no, it didn't do that. That was the game move. So black adds a stone to the center. Uh, white will push through and capture. And and so this would be, if I felt I was going to win the game, if I was with uh, holding the black stones and I felt that I had a good game going, 
Um, I would be thinking of playing a move like this. This would be the safe move. Um, if we ignore the, um, it looks like it's the best move. It, it's the, the feeling is that this should be the best move. Um, but the real question is whether it's going to be good enough to win or not. Mm. Um, and I think that white has a small lead in this variation when white um, takes the lower side territory. Um, so it, the problem is that it relatively simplifies the game. It would, from the human viewpoint, it would make it easier to finish the end game. Um, and it's a pattern I've, I've seen in the master series also, um, where AlphaGo seems to simplify the game. It probably gives a higher winning percentage uh, mm, when there's mm -hmm. less, less, um, less fighting that could happen. It's, there's mm -hmm, less danger. Mm -hmm. And so black plays another move on the lower side. We see mm -hmm. that black is trying to take some extra territory. Um, yeah, that was a forcing move. White played some forcing moves first. And now white is, um, this is the shape move. This is the move that a human pro would be thinking of too. Um, it's a lot better than, for instance, just uh, trying to move out would be a very heavy shape when black plays a honey on top. Mm. So this is the good shape. And white's idea is, white would like to save the stone on the lower side with good shape. Otherwise, maybe white's going to attack black in the center. So That's white has two potential objectives here. It, it's one or the other. White's not really sure which way it's going to go at this point. Mm -hmm. It depends a lot on how black does it. For instance, if black plays something like this, then obviously the lower side would be black's territory. Um, my guess would be that white plays something like mm -hmm. this. To Something's going to fall. Yeah, I get that feeling too. And so black cuts here. And so this, this way, white gets to take some territory. And again, um, it's very similar to a strong human player simplifying the game when he thinks he's winning. Because um, this is the point where actually white allows black to make a ponuki, which um, early in the game, that would be really bad. It would be, a, um, like they say, a ponuki is 30 points. Mm -hmm. The value of a ponuki is actually, um, it differs depending on the board position. Um, so uh, Ponuki on the second line or something like that would be much smaller, usually, even in the early part of the game. Um, but usually when you have a Ponuki like this in the center of the board, it's very influential. But in this case, obviously, it's the center of the board is, has shrunk a lot, and it's uh, filled with stones, so the actual effect of that Ponuki is smaller. But just to show the variation, uh, usually white would first be thinking of playing here. I think black would just play here. And you can see black is getting a nice, uh, a very satisfying Atari here. Um, just that should make up for a lot of the trouble that black's going to have from here on. Um, black ha does have to save the lower side. And again, it's a, um, it's like it's a huge Semigo problem here. And I'm not going to try to go into more detail. <sighs> It looks a bit dangerous for black, but as I said before, black does have a forcing move in this vicinity um, that is threatening to connect the one stone here. I have the feeling that black might be able to handle this center it, group. It, 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 feels, it feels okay. Yeah. It, it looks like it could make two eyes, in which case black would be getting all the territory. So right. that would be okay for black. So white's, uh, you might say white is playing it safe. Um, I'm pretty sure the people at DeepMind would have a different way of defining that, but that, that's the way I see it. Um, and white's alive now. At this point, uh, if black plays here, white can play here. So um, those points are interchangeable, so white's alive. It, um, again, it's a point where black could play what we call the honte, the, the safe move, you might say, mm -hmm. which would be something like that. And white could then play here. This is the biggest move on the board. Okay. Um, and so black would get some territory in the center, um, but it doesn't seem to be enough. Like I, I tried a, I tried an end game sequence here, something like this, and black is getting some territory in the center, um, but it looks like white has a, a small lead at this mm. point. So that's probably the story behind uh, this move in which black is playing the big territorial move. It's a wow. very big move. Um, it's about 15 points, plus the fact that now black um, can sort of aim at the weak point, the cutting point here at some point. So uh, 
Yes. And turn White gets to yes. attack in the center. Yes, that's so big. Um, and now it's interesting because this is where White plays the peep without bothering with the double Atari. Um, and like if Black plays something like this, White's going to be able to um, take away uh, take away one of the Black Stones. Like like it, it might turn out to be something like this. Um, huge, wow. Which would be pretty big. Yeah. So, um, so instead Black um, answers here. White pushes through. And this is an interesting point in the game where Black could have connected and would not have died. So just to show you that variation, um, White's going to connect on the outside. And it turns out Black can live with this slide here. No um, it's an interesting position. Like if White plays this way, Black's going to pull back here. And okay. Black has a potential eye with the uh, cut or with... Um, so like if White plays here, then Black's going to get an eye on this side. Got it. Got uh, that's it. just okay. a lie. Yeah. Um, or if white plays on this side, then black will be able to make an eye here. So it's a light one way or the other. Uh, also, if white does something like, um, let's go back a few moves and have white play here. And that doesn't really work either because black's going to play here and here. And it's actually good for black to squeeze this way so that black can get an eye here. Right. So it's perfectly alive. So in the game, um, black does not connect. The problem is that even though Black's alive, um, White's going to get this nice attack in the center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, all of Black Stones do not really have eye shape. Like even, even these Black Stones in the lower right corner, now these are not completely alive either. And so Black has a lot of stuff to worry about, and White would be pushing Black around. So that's probably why Black did not connect there and uh, cut in the center. Uh, white gets, and again, this is a case where if black uh, takes the stone, then black is not connected. This would be a co. So uh, black doesn't do that, but just simply connects. And now white extends, black takes the stone. So that seems reasonable. Um, white's getting some extra territory there. So that was what mm -hmm. white accomplished in this variation. Um, with this move, white is protecting the corner territory. Um, and at the same time, White is, White is making um, Mi a, a move at A or B. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of ways White can handle it if Black chooses to play here. Like, White could even play here. Um, but White, basically, White is making the connection on the side, Mi with making an eye on the right. Mm. Uh, so that's not what Black did. Um, Black played... Don't ask me why. Oh. But AlphaGo does that kind of stuff. And here... Uh, we get to this position where um, it looks dangerous for black, but actually black does have, uh, black has, if white tries something like this, it could be fairly dangerous for white too. For instance, black can play an Atari here and connect here. And actually these white stones in the center are captured. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So white has to worry about that. And white backs up, black plays the connection. And we're finally heading into a peaceful end game. Uh, this this Kosumi here is a really neat move. Uh, you would there would be a tendency to want to connect up on the side, but actually mm -hmm, reducing mm -hmm. Black's corner territory is more important. So Black cuts White off, and um, and now this big move in the corner, yeah, and we're just playing end game moves here. So the game is about to end actually. Yeah. Um, a straightforward end game. And uh, so just before AlphaGo resigns, I'm, I think I made a variation. Yeah, I did. At this point, um, the game ends very soon. So I had Black play here. This is the end game sequence for Black in the lower right corner. Like if White plays something like this, then Black can cut here. Yeah. Or yep. probably worse. There's probably better moves. But So White's going to answer the meat. Um, and just finishing it off here. Um, I, actually, I think I actually went to the end. Um, mm. It's actually pretty big uh, that I allowed Black to, to cover at this point. So mm -hmm. I was giving Black uh, the breaks, you might say, because there might have been a chance for White to play that slide in the upper right corner. Mm -hmm. um, but it was sort of, it was sort of um, 
that would really have complicated the end game. So I kept it relatively simple, and I found that even so, white's going to win because this is going to end in a half point win for white. So that's uh, for what it's worth. This is the end game sequence on this go. Those of you who really like to study the end game might take a look at it in detail. I'll just show you the end position. White's winning by a quarter of a storm or, or half a point in the wow. territory counting. So wow. the actual game ended at the point where White White played this move. Um, it's more or less equal, um, an equal result to what I was showing before. Right. And then White's going to win by half a point. Wow. So really, it's a, <coughs> I mean, as usual, a fascinating game. But the way it kind of goes back and forth, and you really, and you talked about this earlier, that White just really seems to be driving this game. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it just seems to have been in control for for a lot of the game, right? I mean, and yeah. It's not... Well, the the point where I would have been very very worried with White would is where White was invading the the Moyo in the upper right. Yes, and that yes. that group could easily easily have died. Um, and after that, White was in control, and you could see by the way the players were playing it that Black was trying to get something extra. Um, right. But actually, um, as you see, even even in this end position, it's a half point. Uh, right. It was probably very, very close throughout. Right, right. Yeah, from well, the human viewpoint. What was fascinating to me about, you know, that whole upper quarter of the board just looked so black, and White just looked, you know, really thin and impossible. And the way it turns out, even looking at it now, you know, that it got really shrunk down and, and white really kind of turned the table. So it's a it's yeah. a really interesting game. And and thanks for doing all that. I, I'm one of those ones who really likes Endgame. I think there's a lot of us out there. So thanks for going to taking a look at that. That's, that's yeah. a, a place that's really useful. Well, as always, Michael, wonderful analysis. Thank you so much. I, I know that uh, a lot of folks out there feel the same. And, uh, of course, just a reminder to everybody to uh, continue to support the, uh, the AGA, uh, usgo.org, so that we can keep on doing this. We're, uh, we're over the halfway point. We're, we're, we're just plugging along here. So <laughs> we'll, we'll keep on going, and hopefully uh, we've got our technical issues solved. So thanks again to, uh, to our producer, Babs Wanick. So thanks, Michael. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next week.